Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Kerr. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I love it. There's like 98% women, and David wins the... Uh... That's incredible. How are you? On a scale of 9 to 10, how is everyone doing? Are you at least a 9? You're very quiet. Sorry, I have to, I have to unveil my, my stuff here. That's very exciting, isn't it? Uh, I have the most serious question of the morning for you, I think. And the question is this. How many of you would like to go back to your jobs, knowing that for you to be even more successful at whatever it is you do, you should be having at least a little bit more of this? <laughs> huh? How many of you would like to have at least a little bit more of this each and every day? And how many of you would like to end one of those off-the-wall kind of days knowing that you could still manage to leap through the front door of your house at the end of the day and yell out, Honey, I'm home! <laughs> now, I should explain what this is because, man, do some of the men look frightened. <laughs> this is the international symbol for having fun. And it is one of the most serious questions we can ask. It's not a trivial question. If we want to create a high-performing workplace culture that is more creative and innovative, and we also have to think of this as the end result of a high-performing workplace culture, then there's nothing trivial about it. And culture is everything, and everything you do is culture in terms of your success. We have to think about how can we create a truly creative, inspiring, and yes, even fun culture that is so inspiring, when you wake up on a Monday morning, the first thing you hear when you think about your work is the theme from Rocky. You hear those bells. And the first thing you see when you open your eyes is your organization's logo because you've actually spray-painted it to the ceiling of your bedroom. <laughs> so you see that logo, you catapult out of bed to your full-length mirror where you do the fun dance naked in front of the mirror. <laughs> You cartwheel into the shower, where in the shower you sing your workplace theme song. You cartwheel out, run around the house naked, air-drying yourself. You grab your most important personality characteristic, your sense of humor, run to work, jump up on the nearest desk, punch your fist in the air, and you yell out, Yes, baby! I'm at work! <laughs> now, how many of you fall into this camp? <laughs> Anybody at all? Now, maybe I'm exaggerating a wee bit, but I think... We have to make sure we're moving in that direction and moving away from the other direction where too many of us are hanging out on those Monday mornings because too many of us, I fear, in our society are waking up on a Monday morning looking a little something like this. <laughs> Not dancing naked in front of the mirror. In fact, and I know you've all been there, you're so stressed out, you don't even bother to have a shower, right? You just give yourself a wet sponge bath <laughs> using a few damp pieces of toilet paper. <laughs> and then you get dressed into your regulation prison wear for the week, stagger out into your kitchen where fortunately for you, you've got a paramedic crew standing by to start a caffeine IV drip. <laughs> And then you drive to work with these crazy, commuting, stressed-out zombies out here. All you can manage to do is slump over your steering wheel and steer with your forehead. And you've got this huge, <laughs> huge coffee perched between your thighs. They were giving me the oddest look. And then here's the deal. You get to work. And if there isn't a sense of meaning or purpose in your work that goes beyond just collecting a paycheck. If there isn't a sense of enthusiasm and passion, and I'm not talking about fake passion, but real energy, and yes, a little bit of this, then pretty soon you end up in survivor mode, just praying that someone votes you off this island. <laughs> and we have too many people in survivor mode these days, too many people that are stressed out. My province of Alberta, according to an Ipsos Reid survey, is Canada's leading capital of photocopy machine rage. 51% of Albertans have physically assaulted a photocopier. Some guy in Saskatchewan lost it at a Tim Hortons. The judge charged him with assault with a donut. Which is sort of like the Canadian version of a drive-by shooting, right? 
so we're too stressed out, I think. And, and, you know, maybe it's not that you're even all that stressed out. Maybe it's just that you have people working on your team that quit your organization a long time ago, but they still keep showing up at work. <laughs> or maybe you just have too many people that have lost that loving feeling, and they're just showing up at work, and they're just doing this, right? Running on that rat race, just going into work, waiting for the next piece of cheese from the boss. Oh, thanks, boss. <laughs> Waiting for the end of the day, so you can go home, have a little bit of this. Back running, waiting for the weekend, back running, waiting for holidays, back running. What are some of you waiting for? <laughs> Did somebody yell out death over here? <laughs> I heard this tiny little death swap. <laughs> I was just thinking retirement. <laughs> but some of you have longer career plans. So. But how sad is this that we can't wait to stop doing the very thing that consumes most of our time in this short thing called life. As workplace expert Lily Tomlin once said, even if you win this rat race, you're still a rat. So I think we need to talk about how can we stay off the rat race and hang out in the human race, a little more productive, creative place to hang out. And before I talk any further, I'm going to fix my hair. <laughs> Which, by the way, I was doing a leadership workshop a couple weeks ago. Somebody comes up during the break, and I get this question all the time. She asks me if this is a toupee, and I'm starting to get offended because I'm thinking, if I had a toupee, why would I have one that looks like this? <laughs> and evidently you agree with me. <laughs> So how do we create a truly inspiring workplace culture? Well, one of the things we need to talk about, just one, of course, is those values that you're living each and every day. Now, everybody talks about values at work, right? Because values make us feel so good. And we roll out the values, we put them on a nice poster, and then we hold hands and we sing about our values, right? But of course, here's the deal about values. It's not like anybody can go into work on a Monday morning and plan their week and think to themselves, okay, let's see, that trust thing, I'll do that Wednesday afternoons, and I'll be a team player Friday, because, you know, it's Friday, right? Of course it doesn't work like that. When we talk about values, we have to talk about those old cliche sayings, actions speak louder than words, talk is cheap, you are what you do, not what you say. So we talk about a value like teamwork. I mean, isn't that self-evident? Let, let me ask you this. Is there anyone here who's opposed to the idea of teamwork? Anybody here who, whenever you've applied for a job in your life, said in the job interview, I want you to know I'm not a team player. 